I have lived my life as best I could, not knowing its purpose, but drawn forward like a moth to a distant moon. And here, at last, I discover a strange truth, that I'm only a conduit for a message that eludes my understanding. Hello and welcome to Visions of the Past. This is an Assassin's Creed lore podcast. My name is Andrew and I'm grateful to see that you have found this podcast. Today we're going to talk about the man who gave us that quote, Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Now, for those of you who have listened to last week's podcast, you will remember that we finished Ezio's life up to his duel with the Pope Alexander VI and finding that the Vatican basically contained a vault that covered a message from Minerva, someone who had, quote unquote, came before. Meeting Mario on the way out of the chapel, he would arrive at Monteregioni on January 1st, 1500. And on that night, he would explain what happened to Niccolo Machiavelli, Maria, Claudia, and Mario Auditore, and Caterina Sforza. After spending the night with Caterina, Ezio would be awoken by cannon fire that would destroy the armor of Altair that Ezio recovered before his battle with the Pope. Ezio would find that Cesare Borgia had led siege to Monteregioni. Ezio would eventually lead villagers out of the city after being injured, after immediately watching Cesare murder Mario and retrieve the Apple of Eden. Ezio would awake in Rome after passing out en route. After he would take some medicine, he would meet with Machiavelli and inform him of the loss of the apple and the death of Mario. After arguing the best way to liberate Rome, Ezio would find his way to Nero's Golden Palace and find out about the armor of Brutus. After discovering that the Roman assassins were in trouble, Ezio would work to gather the thieves, mercenaries, and the courtesans to work with the assassins once again. In May 1500, Ezio would meet Nicolaus Copernicus and would protect him from the Templars that he had just defected from for they did not want to share his findings with the public. Ezio would then watch as the courtesan's Madonna was murdered, and his sister Claudia would take over as the new Madonna of the Rosa in Fiore. After a meeting in June of 1501 between Ezio Machiavelli, La Volpe, Claudia, and Bartolomeo Aldiviano, Ezio would infiltrate the Castella Sant'Angelo with the main goal to assassinate the Pope and Cesare. Caterina Sforza was brought in as Ezio traveled to the Castella on June 30th, 1501. And when he found that both the Pope and Cesare were away from the Castello, the only thing that he could do was rescue Caterina. That day, Ezio would take to the streets to recruit citizens to the assassins. And between 1502 and 1503, Ezio would help Leonardo da Vinci in destroying machines that he was designing for the Borgia to use in their war machine. In 1503, Ezio would lay out a plan to Machiavelli, Claudia, La Volpe, and Caterina that included assassinations of the French general Octavian de Valois and Cesare's banker Juan Borgia the Elder, along with figuring out a way to get into the Castella after his original attack. On August 1st, Ezio would meet Senator Igdio Troche about his debts to the banker. Using Troche to get to the banker, Ezio would then assassinate him. Within two weeks, Ezio would work with Bartolomeo against Di Valois, and after Di Valois had kidnapped Bartolomeo's wife, Pantasilea Baglioni, Ezio would dress as a French soldier and infiltrate the camp, ending up with the assassination of Di Valois, who then worked with La Volpe to not only find a traitor within the assassins, but to save Lucrezia Borgia's lover, Pietro Rosi, from Cesare's executioner, Micheletta Corellia, ending with Ezio gaining a key to the Castella Sant'Angelo. After all of this, on August 16th, 1503, Ezio and Machiavelli would induct Claudia into the assassin order, and after her induction, Machiavelli would step aside as mentor in favor of Ezio, as he brought the Italian assassins back together after the fall of Monteregioni. Two days later, Ezio would infiltrate the Castello to see a failed attempt from the Pope to poison Cesare that would end up with Cesare poisoning the Pope. After giving the Pope his last rites, Ezio would find the apple on his way out of St. Peter's Basilica, and over the next few months, Ezio would use the apple to weaken Cesare's presence in Rome. 
ending in December 1503, when Pope Julius II would have Cesare arrested after Cesare battled with the assassins. After sitting with Leonardo and looking into the apple, Ezio would leave immediately as the apple showed him that Cesare would escape and would keep Cesare from escaping within a crate. The next few years would see Ezio as a counselor to Pope Julius II until he found that Cesare was transferred to Spain. After rescuing Claudia from a band of Borgia diehards, Ezio would lead a force that would capture Micheletto Corla and transfer him to Florence. Micheletto would eventually escape, and Ezio decided that it would be best to follow Micheletto to Cesare by using the apple that would only show him a Spanish castle. In 1506, Ezio would then hide the apple under the Colosseum in a precursor vault that was beneath it. Shortly after, Ezio would meet with Leonardo in an attempt to chart a ship to Navarre. This conversation would lead Leonardo to ask Ezio to find his apprentice, Sali. Once returning, they would find that Leonardo had been taken by the cult of Hermes to the Temple of Pythagoras, though they did not know how to find it. This would lead Ezio on a journey to find paintings that Leonardo had done in, in the past, where he had hidden a map for finding the Pythagorean vault, which was located under the Temple of Pythagoras. Ezio would not only save Leonardo on June 22, 1506, but he would enter the vault and would be given the location of the Grand Temple, even though he didn't know it. Two days later, Ezio, Leonardo, and Machiavelli would arrive in Naples, where they would book a passage to Valencia in an attempt to catch Micheletto. After losing Micheletto, Leonardo would return home, but Ezio and Machiavelli would stay to attack Cesare's forces in Valencia. After destroying a dozen ships, Ezio would meet up with Machiavelli to watch Cesare shoot Micheletto in the head, killing him. After a bad turn of events, Ezio would help Machiavelli to a doctor after Cesare had shot him in the shoulder. And on March 15, 1507, Ezio would catch up to Cesare during his siege of Vienna. After a battle through the town, they would end up on the city walls, where Ezio would throw Cesare to his death after Cesare stated that no man could kill him. Between the death of Cesare and 1509, Ezio would strengthen the Italian assassins by creating a standard training method for new recruits and would form a stronger system of communication throughout the Italian city-states. In 1509, Ezio would find some of his Uncle Mario's documents, in which he would find a letter written the year before Ezio was born that mentioned a seal library beneath the fortress of Masayaf. Wanting to find out more about the order, Ezio would set sail for Syria in 1510. After 10 months of bad luck that would include poor weather, an extended stay in Cyprus, and a pirate willing to help him, Ezio would arrive in Acre. After a week in Acre, Ezio would write a letter to his sister Claudia telling her about his journey and what should happen if he does not survive it. Ezio would arrive in Masayef in March of 1511 to find it largely abandoned and falling apart. On his way to the fortress, he would be ambushed by a group of Byzantine Templars. After Altair was distracted by the visions of Altair, he would be captured and led to the watchtower to be hung. Ezio, of course, would escape this predicament and make his way to the doors of Altair's library where he would learn that the leader, Leandros, had Niccolo Polo's journal that supposedly led to the keys needed to open the door. Ezio would eventually catch up with Leandros after finding out that the Templars were looking to find the keys to open the library. Ezio would then kill Leandros and take the journal for himself. Landing in Constantinople in May of 1511, and after meeting the leader of the Ottoman assassins, Yusuf Tazim, Ezio would spend the next month and a half training with the Ottoman assassins with a new hidden blade called the Hook Blade. He would learn bomb crafting and help the assassins fight for control of Constantinople. On June 22, 1511, Ezio would head to the old Polo trading post, where he would officially meet Sofia Sartor, who had turned the trading post into a bookshop. While looking around the shop, Ezio would discover a hidden passageway that would lead through the Urbatan cistern, where he would find the first key to the door, and an encrypted map that he would decode with the help of Sophia. Ezio would take and hide the first key safely in the assassin's headquarters, where he would retrieve the memory that Altair had imprinted on the key. On August 4th, Ezio would infiltrate Topkapi Palace, where Yusef, with the plan to protect Prince Suleiman, after keeping him safe from an assailant, Ezio would watch over a meeting between the princes Ahmet and Suleiman and the Janissary Captain Tarek. After this meeting, Ezio would spend much of the next year investigating Tarek and the Janissaries. This investigation would lead to Tarek's death after an exchange of weapons between Tarek and Manuel Paleologos. Though, Ezio would find that Tarek 
was actually trying to bring in Manuel and his associate, Shakulu. During this time, Ezio would find three more keys and relive three more of Altair's memories. After the death of Tarek, the Janissaries would raise the great chain in the mouth of the Golden Horn to try to find him for killing Tarek. Ezio would destroy the chain, and after burning many ships in the Great Horn, would sail to Darren Kiyu with Piri Reyes. Arriving in March 1512, Ezio would find many in Tarek's network had been discovered and executed by the Templars. After killing Shakulu and Manuel, Ezio would claim the final key, and out of that, the true leader of the Byzantine Templars was Prince Ahmet, who had threatened Sophia as he had left the city. Ezio would end up following him after setting off an explosion and heading to the docks. On his way back to Constantinople, he would relive Altair's fifth memory. Arriving in the city in April 1512, Ezio would find that Yusuf was murdered trying to protect Sophia. Ezio would rally the Ottoman assassins on April 25th, 1512, and would face Ahmet in an attempt to save Sophia. Going so far as giving Ahmet the five keys of the library in exchange for Sophia, he would find that the hostage that was atop Galatas Tower was was not Sophia, but that she was being hung in the courtyard below. This would directly lead to Ezio and Sophia chasing Ahmet through the Ottoman countryside. After a terrible crash, the standoff between Ahmet and Ezio would be put to an end by the arrival of Suleiman's father Selim with his army. Informing them that Selim and Ahmet's father had abdicated the Sultanate to Selim, Selim would throw Ahmet off a cliff to his death and inform Ezio that he was no longer welcome in Constantinople. Sophia would accompany Ezio to Masayef, where they would arrive in May 1512. And using the keys they recovered from Ahmet, Ezio would enter the library to find Altair holding a final memory key while sitting in the middle of an empty library. After reliving Altair's final memory, Ezio would find that the key he was holding unlocked a vault that was holding another Apple of Eden. Refusing to take the apple, it would emit a light that would allow Ezio to speak directly to his descendant, Desmond Miles. Acknowledging that he was destined to be the conduit for a message to Desmond, he would declare he was done as an assassin and encourage Desmond to make his life sufferings worth it and then to listen to a message from a precursor by the name of Jupiter. Ezio and Sophia would return to Constantinople under Suleiman's protection as long as they did not stay long and stayed out of trouble. In June 1512, they would sell Sophia's bookshop to the assassins. They would hide the Masayef keys in the cistern where Ezio had found the first key, and to make sure that Dogon, who was the new leader of the Ottoman assassins, was able to command the local guild. Sophia and Ezio would marry in Venice on the way to Rome, in which they would arrive in late 1512. Ezio would choose Lodovico Aristo as his successor, in which Claudio would protest because of his close relationship to Alfonso d'Esta and his wife, Lucrezia Borgia. Settling in the Tuscan countryside, Sophia would give birth to their first child, Flavia, in May 1513, and their final child, Marcello, in October 1514. Most of Ezio's time would be spent tending a vineyard and writing his memoirs. In 1515, Ezio would continue to help the Brotherhood by supervising the training of Harem Stoddard and Giovanni Borgia, who was the son of Lucrezia Borgia and Perotto Caldron. After retrieving a letter from Michelangelo telling Ezio of a Templar plot in Florence, Ezio would send Hiram and Giovanni to look into it. By 1519, Ezio would develop a serious cough from a chest infection, and a visit from Machiavelli would reveal that Leonardo was dying. Ezio would travel with Machiavelli to Amboise in France, where he would meet with Leonardo, and over the course of a week, the two would spend much time talking about what they had been doing. Ezio would be with Leonardo when he took his last breath on May 2nd, 1519. In November of 1524, Ezio would meet the Chinese assassin Xiao Jun, who had come to learn from Ezio. Ezio would refuse to help until they were ambushed by a Chinese imperial soldier in Florence. Ezio would then teach Xiao Jun in combat and stealth, which would allow her to liberate China from the Eight Tigers. After defending Ezio's villa from a late night attack, Xiao Jun would leave the villa with a small chest that Ezio had told her to only open if she had lost her way. On the morning of November 30th, Ezio would go to Florence with Sophia and Flavia. Ezio was not feeling well and had sat down on a bench where Sophia would tell him that he should have stayed at home. Ezio replied that he was at home and Sophia and Flavia would buy some groceries while Ezio had a conversation with a young man who would berate the women of Florence with Ezio responding that it wasn't the city but the man that was the problem. Immediately after the conversation, Ezio would begin panting and holding his chest in pain. Looking to his wife and daughter, Ezio would then pass away on the bench at the age of 65. Ezio was my introduction to the historical aspects of Assassin's Creed, and for that he will always have a special place in my heart.
He was known for his outgoing personality, making friends with the most respected people in his time. Friends that included renowned Renaissance artists Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. He would also be known to have multiple romantic relationships all throughout Italy within his youth. For me, though, I think it's his personality that puts him up there for playable characters. And when you mix it with the tale of revenge, it makes him one of my absolute favorite assassins. His place in lore is completely undeniable, and his interactions with Isu artifacts, as well as the messages that he received from both Jupiter and Minerva, would lead to a legacy so vast that he would end up having a statue within the assassin's headquarters that was located in Dubai when the mentor of the time was murdered in the year 2000. Thank you for your time. Please feel free to subscribe to the podcast, and you can always find me on Twitter at visions underscore AC. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed, and to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.